Hi there everyone, Tiny One Badger here, and if you're anything like me, you love the pair of Nico Mimi that your boyfriend spent way too much money on. Love it so much that you lost the back piece. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to make custom Neko Mimi ear bases. So, what we're going to be making is the little cover that goes over this little white part. The final product should look something like this. And there'll be two little Nico Mimi, and of course, they'll move. What we'll need for this tutorial, and I'll shove it in the description too if you missed it the first time, is we're going to need a needle and thread, uh, preferably some that matches your fur color. We're going to need some scissors. I'm using my nice pair even though I probably shouldn't be. Masking tape and saran wrap. I'm including the saran wrap in the tutorial this time. And a few buckets of fur. Well, actually, these are just scraps. You can pretty much use, I'd say, a foot of fur and also add in any colors that you might want to use. Like, this is a, a peachy fur that I dyed, and this is some regular white fur. And it's a super simple tutorial. You're not going to have to actually make the base since the Nico Mimi base comes with it. And something that's probably good to have with, for this tutorial is Nico Mimi itself, but I guess you could just like make a headband and put some foam inserts and make some that way. Step one for this tutorial is to get your adorable little base and wrap it in this beautiful saran wrap. This is actually wax paper because I make very good decisions with my life. And just uh, nip off the edge. Make sure it covers the entire thing. And then we're going to take our masking tape and just circle it all around there. Now this is the way to do it if you want to waste tape. The best way to do it is to cut off little strips. Just uh, apply them like that, but don't rip off several parts of it. Now, a very important part of this is to see this little rim right here? Leave that little square part open, but just get the very outside of side rim with it with some tape. See? And you're just gonna get the very rim of that. That's pretty nice because it's still made out of a squishy foam, so you can still get the fur around it, but it also won't fall off. An alternative is to put a strip of elastic inside of it, like this ear base has, but that's a little bit more complicated and really hard to do with hand sewing, which I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. It's all taped up like a bug in a rug, but I don't understand why a bug would be taped up in a rug anyway. So, remembering which way your original base went, you're going to draw on your pattern. And that's what my pattern's going to look like. I've got this little triangle here because Nico Mimi, instead of actually having any depth like most fursuit ears have, they're built on the illusion that there's really an inside. So you're going to want to place that triangle there, which I put it in the, no, I'll put it in the right spot. If you're unsure about where to place the lines to cut it, see, I put them around the rim, around a part where I want white, and around the body, so I can cut out this one big triangle piece. If you're not too sure about where that, just flip your original inside out and see what they did. You see, they've got this big triangle. And then they've got the, these lines. And then they've got a strip of elastic instead of fur. So you can copy the uh, ear covers you already have that came with the Nico Mimi. Now I chose to add different colors to mine, so I made my arrows different colors as well. But the arrows signify which way the fur is going to go. This little piece on top is going to be white. This triangle is also going to be white, but it's going to be shaved down. And this one's going to be orange. And I also made sure that the bottom was orange too, but the bottom doesn't really have arrows. Now, we're going to cut the pattern off. This one's going to be pretty easy because it's a nice thick pattern, but if you want, you can use an X-Acto knife on this part. 
Now make sure that all of your that you try to keep everything and all of your different colors in one solid piece. Like I'm going to cut out that triangle, then I'm going to cut out the little bottom part. And now I'm left with all of these little pieces. These ones being orange and these two being white. Something I like to do with my patterns is I like to take the little paper part and trace it on the little masking tape part and trace it onto some paper, but that's also kind of time consuming and I'm on a time restraint and my last video went over 15 minutes. So I'm gonna do this the ghetto way. Taking this lovely fur that I absolutely swear is orange, I'm going to check which side, which way the fur is going and I'm going to put down my pattern and trace it out with the Sharpie that I totally have. Now you can also use chalk for this. I just lost my chalk. And then we're gonna flip it so we get a, so we get a left and a right ear. And then just so we remember, we're gonna write an R or we're gonna write an L. Easy as that. Remember to do the exact same with your other color of fur if you're doing two colors of fur. Now usually, this little triangle part, you could do it on a shorter pile of fur, but since I, just, just, since I don't really have very much fur on hand right now, I'm gonna be using this long stuff that I have a lot of. And I put a fold there, so I'm just gonna draw that on. And just to keep from getting confused, you can write out which part it is, too. There are two methods I use for cutting out fur. The first one is to take your normal pair of scissors and just cut very, very gently right along the nap. And this way, you don't cut away too much of the uh, pile of the fur, so fur doesn't quite get everywhere. Or you could use an X-Acto knife. And this is nice because you're cutting along the very fabric of the fur and you're not trimming the fur itself. So they're both very good methods. I'm probably gonna use the scissor one right now because my X-Acto knife isn't very sharp and I need to get a new one. But you choose whichever method you prefer. Like, do you want a clean room or do you want it to go a little bit faster? Now when you're cutting to sew stuff, the best way to do it is to leave a little bit of excess. These aren't working. And by that I mean about a half a centimeter of space just so you can sew. Now I'm doing this just because I don't have the right color of short fur to do this, but I'm going to take my long fur and trim it. And I'm just going to try to get as close to the fabric part without showing any of the fabric itself. Now, if you like, instead of doing what I did, this little triangle part where I cut the fur, you can just make that a piece of felt. After you're done trimming, you might want to get rid of this mess before your mom finds out. Throw that down there. You might want to wear goggles and, like, a ventilator, too. Or, like, clean off your desk, I don't know. Now, remember, this little square part, just, uh, cut that out. And our Nico Mimi's gonna go through there. Let's get sewing! Now I'm, I'm choosing this lovely pink thread, which is Allery. Yeah, that's a thread brand I use. And this sort of matches the color of my supposedly orange fur. And just gonna nip the very tip of my thread so it's Okay. 
and I'm going to bring it through. Get a pretty good long thread on there. And then I'm going to take the end of the thread, curl it around my finger, kind of swish it around like that, and pull. That leaves me with a nice knot. Just going to cut that. And now we've got a needle with thread. Now sewing this together should be pretty simple. I've developed a pile of my left and my right pieces. And just start with any piece you have. And put it into the area that it's supposed to go into. I'm starting with the tip. And you're just going to sew all that together. Now I like to use a blanket stitch. And I showed you how to do a blanket stitch in my last video, but just in case. You're going to string your thread through there, and once you bring it around again, and you've got this loop, you're going to take your thread through that. And you're going to keep doing that. You're going to take your thread, bring the needle through, and after you develop this loop, just bring your needle through that. So you're just creating a bunch of loops. This is a bulky stitch. It's uh, very sturdy, though. I like to use it on things that might have some wear and tear, but I pretty much use it as a rule of thumb now. And I like to make sure that my needle is going through both the white, or both the uh, sharp, sharpie marks, just so you keep it really close to the pattern. Now that I've got my little tip sewn on, I'm going to take this little triangle piece, sew it onto this side, Keeping it flipped, I'm going to sew this way, and then I'm going to sew on the little bottom part. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing inside out. Like, if you stick your finger into the thing and you can see your finger through it, you might want to re-sew that. Time to get rid of that super ugly seam with a dog brush. Now isn't that a poofy monstrosity? You might notice through this entire endeavor your needle has been trying to be solid snake and is like sneaking away from you at every chance it gets, but like that can be easily that can be easily found by like moving your hand erratically and when you feel something really sharp, you found your needle. One done, one to go. If you're anything like me, a giant puffball really is not what you look for in an ear. So, once you're done sewing, you can just trim up all the fur. And this will give it a much more shapely, refined look. Now isn't that awesome? Turn off the light so you can see that a little better. But that is a very, very cool ear. Leave it a little bit long at the tip if you want it to be a lynx, or just cut that off if you want to be a regular house cat. All done, all trimmed, go out into the world and show them that you're a cat. Or, do you have cat ears or something? I don't know. Now I really love doing these tutorials. They've been really fun and fit into my commissions and really make me want to go out there and get stuff done. So if you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like me to do, then put them down here. I would really like something that would sort of test what I can do with editing right now. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you later.